Welcome to the Netgear Insight Pro Wi-Fi Training. This course is intended for Wi-Fi and network engineers who design networks with a heavy emphasis on Wi-Fi. This course also assumes that you've taken the Introduction to Netgear Wireless Technology course or are well versed in the concepts and products covered in that course. And this course consists of two major components. The first component is on Insight, which is a management system for the Netgear Business Insight Managed Network. And the second component will focus exclusively on Netgear Pro Wi-Fi, covering the product portfolio, how to select the most suitable model for the purpose, and how to troubleshoot. Throughout these eight short modules, you'll gain general product knowledge and a better understanding of the most common applications used within Pro Wi-Fi. And when you successfully complete the endpoint assessment, you'll become proficient in running Netgear Insight Managed Networks as an administrator, and also proficient in demonstrating key features and capabilities of Insight and the Insight Managed Access Points, and be able to clearly advise on how to set up and deploy a network system which encompasses multiple locations and organizations across a large commercial area. Let's start with the big picture. Here we can see a typical office network comprising of a broadband router, several switches which provide Ethernet connections throughout the premises, and Wi-Fi access points which are connected to the network and the internet via the switches. The wireless endpoints, notebooks, smartphones and tablets are then connected to the network and the internet via the access points, with the wired devices, such as the servers, desktop computers and surveillance cameras, connected directly to the switches. Many of the devices, such as the IP phone and the surveillance cameras, are often powered by the switches over an ethernet cable, using power over ethernet, and these switches and access points form your network backbone. Managing all of these is Insight, which sits in the cloud, and the biggest advantage of a cloud-based management system is that it's scalable and remotely manageable. Netgear provides best-in-class pro Wi-Fi access points with the latest technology to guarantee the best performance at small to medium business-friendly prices. With a wide selection of PoE switches ideal for pro Wi-Fi access points, Netgear Insight is the ideal choice to handle network management because it's highly scalable, manages multi-organizations and multiple locations remotely from a single managed service provider account. Throughout this module, we're going to dig deeper into how Insight managed switches and access points should be selected. We'll look at the hardware to begin with, starting with the switches, the backbone of the network. Then we're going to focus most of our time on the Wi-Fi access points, which provide the connection between the network to the wireless client devices. The Ethernet switches are the network backbone, which fan out the whole network to cover the entire workspace. And the most common devices connected to the switch are other switches, IP phones, desktop computers, servers, printers, and IP surveillance cameras. Many of these devices are powered by PoE, or power over ethernet, meaning they obtain both power and data from the single ethernet cable that they're connected to. Therefore, when selecting your switch, there are several considerations. The location of the switch in the network, the speed of the connection. For example, the closer to the core, the faster the speed the number of ports on the switch, the power budget required to support the PoE endpoint devices, and last, but by no means least, how the device needs to be managed by the user. Generally speaking, network switches fall into two camps, unmanaged and managed. An unmanaged switch guarantees the flow of data traffic from one port to another across all ports. That's it. There's nothing more you can do about it because the term unmanaged means that there are no managed interfaces available for the user to adapt this flow of data. Unmanaged switches are generally cheaper devices and are widely used by consumers all over the world who simply want to expand the amount of hosts or nodes they want to add to their networks. Managed switches do have a user interface, 
which allow users to adapt the data flow using networking features such as VLAN, priorities, and other controls. And there are two ways this management can be performed. The traditional method is by using the local user interface of the switch, using a standard web application to access the switch via its IP address. And you can learn more about how this is done in the Networking Basics course here on the Academy. A more modern and convenient method, though, is via a cloud-based management application, a bit like Netgear Insight. Netgear offer a large choice of Insight managed switches based on network speed, port allocation and PoE budget to help you make the best choice depending on the project's scope and budget. Now it's important to make the correct choice of wireless access points and to help you understand how seriously Netgear take the reliability and performance of its switches, let's see how Netgear Business Wi-Fi stacks up against its competition in the industry. Here we can see three comparison charts taken from Tolly Group, or an independent testing house. After an extensive performance test comparing similar spec devices from Netgear, Ubiquiti, Meraki and Aruba on one particular class of Wi-Fi access point. And we immediately see the performance advantage is obvious. The first picture is showing the total throughput of data, that being the amount of data packets being transmitted at any given time. The second picture shows a split between the egress or upstream and the ingress or downstream throughput. And the third picture then identifies the most critical performance comparison. How does the access point perform when it's connected to 50 devices in terms of lag time or delay and jitter, which is the variation of that delay or latency on a packet flow between two hosts after any lag time from individual packets? Well, the results speak for themselves. Here we can see the latest Netgear Business Pro Wi-Fi portfolio as of quarter two in 2023. They're all Insight managed and they're all Wi-Fi 6 enabled, with one model being Wi-Fi 6E. You can learn more about Wi-Fi 6 here on the Academy. There are several key parameters which you should pay close attention to. The first being the total theoretical throughput. Remember, theoretical means that this is the maximum throughput under the most optimal conditions and could vary from the actual throughput based on the physical environment of the switches and the endpoints where there might be a greater impact on radio data transmission. Secondly, look at the number of bands. At a minimum, they are dual band access points meaning they operate on 2.4 gig and 5 gigahertz bands, those being the standard radio transmission frequency bands in Wi-Fi 6 and earlier. We can see that there are two models here which are tri-band. The WAX 630 splits the 5 gigahertz band into two, effectively doubling the capacity of the 5 gigahertz network. And the WAX 630E takes further advantage of the brand new frequency band of 6 GHz, made available in Wi-Fi 6E. The third parameter to pay attention to is the Ethernet backhaul interface. Backhaul is defined as the set of links which connect the core or backbone networks with the smaller subnetworks on the edge switches before users can access the internet by accessing the subnetwork. And its role is to increase the expanse of network coverage. For anything in Wi-Fi 6, you must have at least 2.5 gigabits Ethernet. However, most Wi-Fi 6 access points are capable of delivering 1 gigabit per second or higher data throughput. So if the Ethernet backhaul interface is the choking point, then overall Wi-Fi performance really doesn't matter anymore. So how do you apply these devices to your network? Well, in a typical workflow, the first task in designing a network is to look at the requirements of that network. These requirements include coverage area, structure and floor plan of the building, and the anticipated number of devices in each area, as well as the expected applications which need to run on the endpoint devices themselves. This stage of the project flow 
is referred to as the remote site survey. Remember, Wi-Fi access points are typically deployed in a large workspace where there are multiple access points connected by an Ethernet backboard. You always have a choice between more access points versus fewer access points with higher capacity and longer ranges. But the best way to start the selection process is by using a simulation tool to make the first round of Wi-Fi planning. Two such tools are available from Netgear, the first being the Pro Wi-Fi Design Service, whereby the customer provides the floor plan, and a Pro Wi-Fi Design Services engineer will offer back a report with Wi-Fi planning. The second option in Wi-Fi planning is through a do-it-yourself portal, of which there are several choices. Ikahau and Hamina both have Netgear libraries to support your remote site survey. And Netgear also offers a remote site survey tool free of charge and brought to you by a partnership between Netgear and Yagna. Simply head to netgear.yagnaait.com and follow the steps to allow the tool to produce a first level estimate of which Wi Fi access points are needed for your network, again, based on the floor plan you provide. You can see we're taking the implementation of your business network very seriously. Finally, beyond what those tools tell you, there is, of course, the human intelligence input needed to refine your selection. If physical dimension is your most critical requirement, WAC 610 is unquestionably your winner. The WAC 610 is in a 164 mm by 164 mm by 33 mm enclosure. You can fit it anywhere. The WAC 615 is the faster version of that WAC 610, with almost twice the speed because of its 160 megahertz channel capability on the 5 gig band. It's in the same price range, however, it is larger in size. We've reached the end of the first module, so now it's your time to reflect and check you've correctly understood this introduction to selecting Insight Managed Switches and Access Points by trying the short quiz. You can take as many attempts as you wish, and when you're ready to move on, I'll see you in module two.